Hello everyone, welcome to Venki's Words. If you want to travel and explore something very different in India, then Andaman is, yes, the place that would give you a feeling that you are traveling internationally, but then you would be exploring the most beautiful part of India. While planning, always remember to first book your flight tickets and then the ferry tickets from one island to another and then goes your accommodation because getting ferry tickets is very tough and based on those timings, you can then book your accommodation. There are two ways to reach Andamans. One is the cruise wherein the voyage takes about three to four days and the other is the flight. So you can catch the flight to Andamans from any uh, major cities in India. And I personally prefer uh, choosing a flight rather than a cruise because the cruise experience can be enjoyed in Andamans while traveling from one island to the other. The best time to visit Andamans is from October to mid-May after which the summers are too hot to bear. We travel from Hyderabad to Chennai and then from Chennai to Port Blair. And once you arrive at the Veer Savarkar International Airport, that is the airport in Port Blair, you can either hire a cab or an auto to reach the jetty from where you can catch a cruise or a ferry to travel to another island. Our travel plan was as below. On day one, we have traveled to Havelock. Second day also we stayed in Havelock. And third day, we traveled to Neil Island. And fourth day, we traveled back to Port Blair. On fifth day, we spent half day in Port Blair and travel back to our place. There are two options to travel from Port Blair to Havelock. The one is a government ferry, which uh, takes approximately three to four hours to travel. Uh, but it's a good experience because you can get on the deck and enjoy the views of sea and sky. The other is private cruise. It takes only two hours to travel, but then it's a luxurious experience to travel on a cruise. Havelock is the largest island of Andaman and Nicobar Islands and is known for its pristine beaches, coral reefs and great scuba diving experience. It's approximately 30 kilometers from Port Blair and the most visited island in Andamans. Let's explore. I would suggest you to take a beachfront property to enjoy the views of sea all the day. On the day you arrive, you can enjoy the stunning views of Vijayanagar Beach, which is another pristine beach and if you do not like crowd, this beach is perfect. Havelock is best experienced on a bike, so you can get these bikes on rent uh, for 500 per day. See on one side and on the other side you have complete dense forest, so the drive in this forest is just wow. On the same day you can even explore Govindagar beach which is a bit underrated beaches of Andamans but it's loveliest beach with a rocky structure all over. Enjoy the sunset in this serene beach. Candlelight dinners are also available here for an extra price. The next day in the morning, plan to start early so that you reach the Elephant Beach by 8 am to enjoy the water activities. They would last around 3 to 4 hours, so the sooner you start, the better it would be. To reach this place, you can either trek for 30 minutes in dense forest approximately for around 2.5 kilometers, or catch a boat from Havelock and reach this place in 20 minutes. So this is one of the most amazing places to visit in Andamans for water sports especially. Uh, water sports can be like kayaking, jet ski, snorkeling etc. Because of its cluster clear waters and silky white sand which you do not find anywhere else in Andamans. And the heavenly coral reefs, the underwater marine life will definitely charm you in all its ways. And this is the only one place in India where sea walk is available. That is, you can dive into the bottom of the sea and walk on the seabed. It's a unique experience. Post lunch, plan to visit the most famous and the best beach in Asia and India as well. And the world's eighth best beach. It's none other than the Radhanagar beach. It has a wide coastline and the forest track runs alongside beach coastline. So the shallow, clear water makes it a perfect place for playing in the beach. Uh, do try the seafood near this beach and do not miss the breathtaking sunset view from this beach. Next day morning, plan to visit the Kalapathar beach by around 4.30 am to enjoy the stunning sunrise in this rocky beach. And then we started our journey to Neil Island, currently known as Shahidweep. This is similar to Havelock but uh, comparatively less crowded and also this is known for its magnificent biodiversity and unexplored span of dense forests. 
One day would be sufficient enough uh, to visit the beautiful beaches of this island, which are named after the mythological characters from the Ramayana, um, namely Ramnagar, Sitapur, Bharatpur, Lakshmanpur beaches. Ramnagar beach is ideal for snorkeling. Do not swim here as there are plenty of sharp corals in this beach. Bharatpur beach has coral reefs with tropical fish. Lakshmanpur beach has amazing sunset views. The natural beach is a mesmerizing place with live corals, colorful fishes and amazing touch me not water flowers. Do not miss to play with these water flowers there. You can enjoy the amazing sunset views at Lakshmanpur beach. Next day early in the morning, plan to visit the Sitapur beach for its beautiful sunrise view. Sitapur beach is one of the quietest and serene beaches of this island, surrounded by greenery on three sides, which opens into a spectacular view of sea on the other. On the same day, we started back to Port Blair, and once you reach Port Blair, uh, try to visit uh, Ross and North Bay Islands, which is a short tour for around 3 to 4 hours. Ross Island, also known as Netaji, Subhash Chandra Bose Island, is a historic place and you can find ruins of old buildings which were like constructed by Indian prisoners at that time. So thick roots of people, trees, old churches, hospital, pool, etc. which were used by Britishers are also present here. And uh, Ross Island was used as a prison to punish the freedom fighters before constructing the cellular jail. So this place has a strange vibe and will take you back to penal settlement age and will remind you the struggle for the freedom. You will be given one and a half hour to explore the place and come back to the boat. So it is better to hire a buggy which is available there to save the time and room around that place. And you can also enjoy the view of beach but uh, there is no coast so you can't get into the beach. After Ross Island, the ferry takes you to North Bay Islands which is reachable around 10 to 15 minutes. North Bay Island is famous for its underwater activities but if you have already planned water activities in Havelock then you can skip them here. Alternatively, plan for either glass bottom boat ride or a semi-submarine safari that is there. Does this view look like you have known this place before? Uh, yes, this was featured on the backside of Indian 20 rupees note. Check the timings of Ross and North Bay Islands, especially the jetty details to board the boat, either with the hotel guy or the booking person as they mostly keep changing. On the same day in the evening, plan to visit the Cellular J Light and Sound Show. Uh, it starts around 6 pm in the evening. Cellular Jail, also known as the Kalapani, is a must visit place for every Indian at least once in a lifetime. This prison has mutely witnessed the most inhuman atrocities borne by our freedom fighters. If possible, first watch the light and sound show in the evening and then maybe in the next day morning, you can go and visit uh, the entire jail to really feel their pain and presence in that place. You can also visit Tiranga Memorial and another important heritage spot where Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose has hoisted the Indian tricolor flag for the first time in 1943 and declared these islands a free territory. If you are planning for a 7 day trip then you can enjoy day trips to Bharatang Island uh, which is famous for its beautiful limestone caves and a live mud volcano and a beautiful boat ride through the thick mangrove forest and parrot island to see hundreds of parrots there. You can also visit Jolly Boy Island which is one of the most clear and shallow waters in Andamans with live corals. So this is open only for 6 months in a year to preserve these corals. Uh, so plan accordingly if you are visiting this place. And you can as well plan other places like Chidiyatapu, Diglipur etc based on the number of days that you are staying in Andamans. Coming to food in Andamans, it's Bengali food without the sweet taste in it. So food with a twist of Bengali cuisine. Hindi and Bengali are the most commonly spoken languages in Andamans. But of course you can always use English for communication. Always before visiting a beach, please check on the beach timings, sunrise and sunset timings. Ferry timings may sometimes vary based on the roughness of sea. So always keep a day at hand in Port Blair. Networks are not that great at Andamans. BSNL is the best, but Airtel and Jio also does their job occasionally. Carry cash adequately as only few ATMs are available in local islands and also carry your ID proofs like Aadhaar as they are required at many places.
This is a list of few things that have to be carried while traveling to Andamans. This is an approximate estimate of trip expenses for your reference. Uh, again, as said, it varies based on season, places, water activities, etc. Hope this video was helpful to plan a trip to Andamans. Do let me know if you have any questions. We'll definitely get back with the answers. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.